Hi guys, I'm Dee Dee West, and this is Broken Limelight. Today I'm going to be talking about Judith Barzi. Judith Barzi was a child actress from the 80s. She starred in All Dogs Go to Heaven, playing the role of Anne Marie, and she also played Ducky in The Land Before Time. She was also in Jaws 4, and she appeared in a lot of TV shows. She was in an episode of Punky Brewster. I saw her on Cheers once for like five minutes. She also appeared on Growing Pains. She was a really cute little girl, and she was super small for her age, so she was able to play roles a lot younger than her actual age, and directors loved her because she took direction really well. Judith was born in 1978. Her parents were Maria Virovax and Joseph Barzi. They were both Hungarian immigrants, but they met in the United States after they each moved here individually. Joseph and Maria had very different upbringings. Maria had a very happy, comfortable life and what would have been considered wealthy. Joseph, on the other hand, grew up poor, living in not the best neighborhoods. As a child, he was also made fun of and bullied for his father not being present in his life. His home life wasn't very happy either. Joseph's mother used to say that he was a bastard to try to, like, stick it to his father. But of course, that affected Joseph a lot. Joseph says that his childhood was miserable and he had no mother or father. So let's talk about Joseph for a minute. Joseph fled Hungary after the 1956 Soviet occupation and he moved to France. And that's where he met his first wife, Clara, who was also a Hungarian immigrant. So Joseph and Clara got married and decided to move to New York together to start a new life. They had two children together, but eventually Joseph started drinking and just becoming an angry kind of dude. He was super sensitive about the fact that people would tease him for his thick Hungarian accent and would become really angry about it. So as his drinking and his anger increased, he would start to make little snide comments towards Clara that turned into straight up verbal abuse. Then he started to become aggressive and physically violent with her, and he would start drinking more and more, which only made the abuse worse. As his drinking increased, his focus began to shift from Clara onto their two children. So she took the kids and she moved them out to Arizona, but Joseph followed them. He begged Clara for forgiveness and he promised to quit drinking, so she gave him a chance. She was relieved for a bit because he did quit drinking and he found a job as a plumber, but this was short-lived. Less than a year later, Joseph threw a cast iron skillet at Clara and she filed for divorce and left him for good. So Joseph gave up on that and he moved to Los Angeles and became a contract plumber. It was in LA that he met Maria. Maria was a waitress and she worked in this restaurant that was kind of like a, a known hangout for Hungarian immigrants. So Joseph would come to this restaurant and like flash his money all over the place. He would offer to buy drinks for all his buddies, and he would always pay for them with a $100 bill. So he was, like, showing off and acting like he had a bunch of money, and that kind of caught the attention of Maria. Maria really wanted to start her own life and her own family. So the two of them hit it off, and they got married in 1977. Maria became pregnant right away, and Judith was born on June 6, 1978. So Maria quit her job, and Joseph struggled finding work. So they lived in a small apartment on welfare. Maria always loved the idea of the Hollywood lifestyle, though. And she saw something in Judith. Maria decided to go ahead and get Judith into acting and dancing and singing lessons at the age of five. And she really thought that she could make it to Hollywood. Judith was a natural, and Maria was a really good coach. So when Judith was like five and a half, she was at a skating rink and a TV crew was there filming a commercial. And they just happened to look over in Judith's direction and notice her, and they knew right away that she would be perfect for another commercial they had coming up. They actually thought that she was only about three years old because of how little she was. So they got her an agent almost immediately. She was signed to Harry Gold and Associates Talent Agency, and she got her first job doing a commercial for Donald Duck Orange Juice. They kept her on board, got her more work. She is credited in over 70 works, including movies, TV shows, and commercials. By age 7, Judith was making over $100,000 a year. So they moved out of their little apartment and into a three-bedroom home in Los Angeles. Judith and Maria started traveling a lot for work, and they both loved it. 
Joseph, on the other hand, started to really feel the pressure to pull his own weight around the house. He couldn't find a job and, again, turned to alcohol. In just one year, he was arrested on three separate occasions for DUIs. He would instigate arguments with Maria and, like, turn violent in the blink of an eye. When he wasn't verbally abusing her, he was physically striking her in the face, choking her, and you can only imagine that Judith probably witnessed some of this. And then Joseph started to show resentment towards Judith and started being really mean to her. One of their neighbors recalled a time when Joseph was drunk and Judith was playing with the kite, and he snatched the kite away from her, and Judith started crying and saying that he was going to break it. And then Joseph said to Maria, you see that? She's a spoiled brat who doesn't want to share. And then he broke her kite into pieces. That same year, Judith was approached by director Don Bluth for a role in The Land Before Time. After auditioning, he asked her if she'd like to play Ducky, to which she responded, Yup, yup, yup. Bluth later incorporated this into her character. The abuse against Maria and Judith got worse and worse. On one occasion, he took Maria to the garage and he showed her a bunch of cans of gasoline he was seemingly collecting. And he told her, if you ever try and leave me, I will burn this entire house down with all three of us in it. Maria was pretty open about what was going on at home. For Judith's eighth birthday, they threw a party at the bowling alley and Joseph decided not to go. So some of the other moms started asking Maria where he was and Maria said that he was stuck at home getting drunk. Despite everything going on at home, Judith continued to do well in school and at work. But she did start to open up around her friends, and she said things like, Daddy throws pots and pans around the house. Or, Daddy says he's going to kill Mommy. So her friends stopped coming over to play with her because they were scared. One time after a party, Joseph was upset, presumably because he didn't like that Judith was getting all the attention. So he picked her up by her ponytail and slammed her down on the ground, giving her a bloody nose. The next day, he bought her a pink TV for her room as an apology. In 1987, Judith was offered a role in Jaws Revenge, and she had to go to the Bahamas for filming. She was nine at this time, and her and Maria were both super excited to go. So Judith was in her room packing, and suddenly Joseph barged in and shut the door, and he put a knife to Judith's throat and said, If you and your mother don't come back after filming, I'll cut your throat. Again, she's nine, as if she has any say over when she can or can't get on a plane for an international flight. So in the Bahamas, Maria had a great time and made some friends and started opening up about the abuse. From the sound of it, people sympathized with Maria and tried to offer her suggestions, but she always seemed to backtrack and just go back to talking about how she was so afraid to go back. And eventually, people just stopped listening to Maria. So after filming, Maria actually decided to take Judith to New York to go visit Maria's brother. Judith was playing with her cousin when the phone rang. It was Joseph on the line, and he asked to speak with Judith. So Judith took the phone, and Joseph said to her, Do you remember what I told you before you left? Judith dropped the phone and ran into the other room crying. She told Maria everything he told her, and Maria took the phone and started yelling at him. Still, Maria and Judith went back home to L.A. the very next day. By the way, around this point, Maria found out that Joseph had been sleeping around. And I mean... He had whole-ass girlfriends that he was, like, taking out on dates and buying presents for. And Maria kind of thought of this as, this is my way out. I'm going to get him to leave me. So she stopped taking care of herself and her appearance and stopped taking care of the house in hopes that he would get sick of it and just leave. But it didn't really work. So in the meantime, Maria got an apartment that she had been secretly moving into. She was, like, slowly moving one box at a time so that he wouldn't notice that she was moving out. But one day in July 1988, while she was moving things, she came out of her apartment and Joseph was there and he was pissed. Somehow, she was able to play it off and say that she was helping a friend move and he believed her. But then she was like, shit, if we go missing, he'll know exactly where to look first. So throughout this, Judith kept working and everyone around her really started to see the signs of abuse. For one, she was staying with friends and family a lot to get away from the violence, and she would kind of say things about what was happening at home. But it seems like people just took it as empty threats, kind of like, well, that's just Joe. In fact, one of Joseph's co-workers said that Joseph told him 500 times that he was going to kill his wife. And when the dude was like, well, what about the little one, meaning Judith, Joseph was like, I have to kill her too. And this guy, I guess, did nothing with that information. 
So Judith started to gain weight, and she had been pulling out her own eyelashes and then pulling out her cat's whiskers. And then one day she had an audition for All Dogs Go to Heaven. In the middle of singing the song, Soon You'll Come Home, she broke down. She started crying hysterically. She was like incoherent. And that's when her agent decided to take her to a child psychologist. The psychologist noted clear signs of physical and emotional abuse and reported her findings to the Los Angeles Child Protective Services. It's unknown whether CPS actually investigated Joseph, but they did interview Maria extensively. Okay, so remember how Joseph had two other kids from his first marriage to Clara? Well, since Joseph was so abusive, they've pretty much refused to talk to Joseph up until this point. So by 1988, they're like in their late 20s, early 30s. One of them forgave Joseph for the abuse and was trying to get the other sibling to do the same thing. So Joseph told them that he had remarried and that they now have a little half-sister, Judith. So they decided to fly into L.A. and visit. While they were there, one of them noticed something in Judith that was familiar. And that's when they realized Judith was being abused. So Judith's older half-sister pulled Maria aside and was like, what's going on? Maria told her everything, and she was just like, keep Judy safe. But it was clear that Maria didn't plan on leaving. She had a different plan, which was to drive Joseph out with the mess of the house. I think one of the things that made it so hard for Maria to leave was that her and Judith had worked so hard for that house and everything in it, and she wasn't ready to leave it all behind and let Joseph keep it. So she was determined to drive him out. So shortly after Joseph caught Maria trying to move into her apartment, Maria told a friend that she was getting ready to cash Judith's $12,000 tax refund check before her husband could get his hands on it. It seems that she was finally getting ready to leave him once and for all. Maria also contacted CPS and told them that she was divorcing Joseph and that she was taking Judith and they were moving into the new apartment. The social worker took her word for it and closed the case the same day without even visiting the home. On July 25, 1988, neighbors saw Judith playing outside on her pink bike for about four hours. Maria told her to come inside to eat dinner, and after dinner, Judith put on her nightgown and went to bed. Then Maria went to bed herself, leaving Joseph awake to drink or do whatever he does. Joseph waited for both of them to be completely asleep, and he went over to his closet and grabbed a thirty-two caliber pistol and went to Judith's room. While she was sleeping, he pointed the gun at her head and fired a shot. The gunshot woke up Maria, and of course she came running out of her bedroom, and when she got there, Joseph had already been on his way to her room. So there was a bit of a struggle in the hallway, and then Joseph knocked Maria down and shot her in the head. He left their bodies right there where they were. The next afternoon, Judith was supposed to go to a recording session for All Dogs Go to Heaven. When she didn't show up, her agent Ruth became really concerned. So she called Judith's home, and Joseph answered. So she asked where Judith and Maria were, and he said, They went to San Diego. A black car took them away. I'm just here to get my things and say goodbye to my little girl. So she thought that was super weird, and she tried calling back later, but nobody answered. The next morning at 8.30, a neighbor was outside watering her garden when she heard an explosion. She looked over at the Barcy house and saw that smoke was coming out of the roof, so she called 911, and the firefighters and paramedics came out. When the firefighters went in, they found all three bodies. Judith and Maria had been doused in gasoline, and Joseph was found in the garage with a self-inflicted gunshot wound, which was actually the sound that the neighbor heard. So basically, after Joseph shot Judith and Maria, he hung out in the house with their bodies for like two days, and then he doused them and the house in gasoline, lit them on fire, and then went into the garage and shot himself. When the news broke, absolutely everyone was heartbroken. Judith and Maria actually went 16 years without a headstone or gravestone of any sort, so in 2014, a bunch of true crimers actually raised the funds and bought them headstones. If you look up pictures of them, which I'll post on my social media pages, both Judith's and Maria's headstones actually say, yup, yup, yup. The Los Angeles Department of Child Protective Services was heavily criticized when the news got out of their failure to save Judith Barzi. For the first time in their four-year history, the Commission for Children's Services asked to review the client file from the LACPS so that they could review the way the case was handled. It seems that the biggest problem they found in this case is that the department was not equipped to deal with instances of emotional abuse as well as they could deal with physical abuse. 
One last thing before I finish this off. Judith's last film was in All Dogs Go to Heaven, which was also directed by Don Bluth. Don Bluth remembered Judith to be a little dream to work with, and he planned to feature her in more of his projects. Her death was really hard on him, and as a way to cope with it, he and his animators based the character of Anne-Marie on Judith's mannerisms. The movie came out in 1989, which means Judith never got the chance to see it. She didn't actually survive long enough to see The Land Before Time, either. As we know, Judith was able to record all of her lines for All Dogs Go to Heaven. However, another actress had to be brought in to sing the song Soon You'll Come Home since it was too difficult for Judith to get through. So again, Judith's last job was starring in All Dogs Go to Heaven playing the role of Anne Marie. Are you curious to find out what her last recorded line was? Goodbye, Charlie. I love you. That's it for today. I know this was a pretty tragic episode, but I just really like to remember Judith Barcy. She would be 43 years old if she were still alive today. Just imagine if Judith and Maria had been able to move out, what Judith's future could have been like. She could have moved on to be the star of all of our favorite kids movies from the 90s. Maybe even in hit films or shows from the 2000s or even today. What if she was supposed to be somebody like Drew Barrymore who is still known and loved today? Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of Broken Limelight. Thanks again for listening. You can now check us out on BrokenLimelight.com. There, I'll be posting updates of new episodes. I've also included a blog section where you can read the transcripts of all of my episodes. So if you ever can't listen to the audio out loud, you can always just go to BrokenLimelight.com and read exactly what I say in all my episodes. I've also included a spot for you to contact me if you ever have any questions or cases you'd like to hear me cover. Thanks again for listening. I'll catch you next week for a new episode of Broken Limelight. Bye!